Tesla is suing Tesla in India. Okay, so Elon Musk's EV company Tesla, the Tesla that everyone knows, is suing this Indian battery company called Tesla Power for using Tesla's brand name to promote their own products. And Tesla, the American company, actually found out about this Indian Tesla Power back in April of 2022. And that's when they decided to send them a cease and desist notice, but that didn't stop Tesla Power from using the name. Now, I'm not a corporate lawyer, but my understanding is that if you're using a popular brand name, or actually any brand name for that matter, like, for example, Tesla, then this would actually be okay if you were operating in an entirely different industry from the existing brand name, in this case, the American Tesla company that everyone knows. And that's kind of actually what Tesla Power told the courts during the hearing. So they told the New Delhi High Court that unlike Tesla in the United States that makes electric vehicles, they are only making lead acid batteries here in India. Now, while this might be true, we also have to look at the location of this company because even though it is an Indian company, they're actually registered in the same state as Elon Musk's Tesla, which is Delaware. In the United States, their brand name is Tesla Power USA. And just looking at their About Us page here, it says that they're acknowledged for being a pioneer and leader in introducing affordable batteries with long life that has revolutionized the energy storage industry. And they also say that we have a very strong presence in India. And these are the exact screenshots that Tesla has shared with the court to make their case. The argument from their side is that Tesla Power never really makes it clear that they're making lead acid batteries like they say during the court hearing, and that's the reason why Tesla isn't happy. However, one strong argument on Tesla Power's side is that they're claiming that they've been in business in India much longer than Elon's Tesla, and they have all of the necessary government approvals as well. They're also saying that they never claim to be related to Elon's Tesla, and personally, I don't think that these are necessarily the strongest arguments in their favor, but it is true that Tesla is not selling any electric vehicles in India, which could be a point in Tesla Power USA's favor. Now, it is true that Elon Musk's Tesla doesn't have a presence, not a meaningful presence anyways, selling electric vehicles in India. There's no factory. They're not importing vehicles. Really, to Indian customers, Teslas are only accessible if those customers choose to import the vehicles themselves. But I would definitely say that this is sort of an indirect point in Tesla Power's favor. It's not something that they can specifically use in their defense. Personally, though, I don't really know enough to quantify this. I don't know how significant of a point that is. And we're just going to have to wait and see how this court case plays out. Who do you think is in the right here? Tesla Power or Elon Musk's Tesla? And also, do you think Tesla's decision to sue Tesla Power could be a sign of them finally deciding to come to India since they don't want their brand to be damaged even before they arrive in the country? Let me know in a comment down below. All right, next up in the news, but continuing to talk about EVs here, at least sort of, I want to talk about Nopo Nanotechnologies. And this is a company that could actually someday potentially help Tesla and other technology companies make batteries that are more stable and efficient by replacing silicon from semiconductors and batteries. So silicon is the reason chips are often simply called semiconductors, because silicon is a semiconductor. Now, this Indian company called Nopo Nanotechnologies is working with a different material called single-walled carbon nanotubes, and this is an advanced material, and it's the thing that's helping them to build more efficient EV batteries and semiconductor chips. And Nopo is already supplying this material to chip makers in Taiwan and Japan, and even though the founders can't say who their clients are because of NDAs, it definitely shows that this technology actually works and it has huge potential because it's already being used and it's in production. According to Nopo, these single-walled carbon nanotubes have more than 120 applications across multiple industries. And on top of that, there are only six to seven players in the entire world who have figured out how to make this material. And of course, Nopo Technologies is one of them. It's also worth noting that they're the only Indian company out of all these players who have figured this out. So it gives them a huge advantage here locally. Now, I know I'm presenting this as news, but in fact, this company has actually been supplying this material to semiconductor companies for the last five to six years. And without naming any names, the founders have said that they're even supplying their product to one of the biggest semiconductor companies in the world, which is being used by them to develop next generation chips. Now, the news here for this week is that Nopo has raised $3 million to set up a factory in Bengaluru or a nearby area to scale up the production of their single walled car carbon nanotubes. And I don't know about you guys, but suddenly it does feel like India might just be on the cusp of something big when it comes to this semiconductor technology. India is already setting up its own semiconductor manufacturing facilities, and just two weeks back, we even talked about Mindgrove Technologies, which had built India's first commercial high-performance SOC. That's a system on chip. So I'd love to know from you guys in a comment down below, does India still have a shot 
at being a significant player in the global semiconductor industry, or has that ship already sailed? All right, next up in the news, I've been talking about the need for Indian brands to go global for a very, very long time. It's something that I'd love to see, and it doesn't happen often enough. But Amazon wants Indian e-commerce companies to export products worth $20 billion by 2025. And to help Indian D2C brands achieve this, back in 2021, Amazon India launched their business accelerator program called Propel. So far, this program has already helped more than 70 Indian brands go global, and some of these brands include the likes of Minimalist, Slurp Farm, and Perfora. And so the news here with this program is that they've opened up the fourth season of Propel, inviting Indian brands to apply, and applications are open until the 14th of June. And apart from helping these brands go international, Amazon India is going to be conducting a demo day where 10 of the selected companies will get the opportunity to pitch to VCs and win rewards up to $1.5 million. This year, Amazon India wants to onboard 50 startups into this fourth season of Propel. And so if you guys are interested, I'll be leaving a link here in the description down below as well as in the pinned comment for you to know more about this program. And this is not sponsored, by the way, but we just think it's a great opportunity that some Indian founders should definitely capitalize on. All right, next up in the news, while Indian brands are trying to go global, there are some reports saying that this global payments giant called Stripe wants to enter India. And none of this is confirmed, so do take it with a grain of salt. But according to this Hindu business line report, Stripe wants to acquire 30 to 40 percent of SBI payments. Now, SBI Payments is a JV between SBI and Japan's Hitachi Payment Services, and SBI owns 74% of this company, and the remaining amount is owned by Hitachi. And one interesting detail that kind of increases the potential validity of this news item is that earlier this year in January, Stripe did receive approval from the RBI to operate as an online payment aggregator in India. And so there is a chance that Stripe may have been planning this out for some time. But their official stance here on this story about Stripe acquiring stake in SBI Payments is that it's just a rumor. That's what they're saying. Is that true? Or are they secretly still trying to make this thing happen? I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. All right, next up in the news, a bunch of Indian tech companies have shared their financials this week. And so I quickly wanna go through some of them to see how these companies are doing. So firstly, I want to talk about fashion e-commerce company Nike, and they have actually been profitable for some time now. So the company closed FY24 with a revenue of 6,386 crore rupees, which is 24% higher than their FY23 revenue of 5,144 crore rupees. This is also their fourth year of being profitable, and they closed FY24 with a net profit of 40 crore rupees, which is almost double their FY23 net profit of 21 crore rupees. Next up on the list, we have troubled fintech giant Paytm, and surprise Surprisingly, despite the whole fiasco with Paytm Payments Bank, their revenue actually grew by 25% from 7,990 crore rupees in FY23 to 9,978 crore rupees in FY24. They've also brought their net loss down from 1,776 crore rupees in FY23 to 1,422 crore rupees. But according to the company, the full impact of the Paytm Payments Bank fiasco on their business will be more visible in the first quarter of FY25. And then lastly, we have logistics service provider Delivery, and they've increased their revenue by 12% from 7,225 crore rupees in FY23 to 8,142 crore rupees in FY24. And while the company is still in losses overall, they've actually been able to turn operationally profitable, making 127 crore rupees in EBITDA. And they've also managed to reduce their net loss from 1,053 crore rupees in FY23 to 244 crore rupees in FY24. Not bad. All right, now let's move over to the funding news segment for today's video. And this week, Indian startups raised just $29 million, which is very low and significantly lower than last week's $142.82 million. But let's take a look at some of the companies that raised funds this week. So first of all, we have Sachin Bunsel's Bengaluru-based fintech startup Navi, and they raised $18 million. Then after that, we have another Bengaluru-based fintech startup Vartana, and they offer education loans to students, and they raised $3 million in debt. Then after that, we have Bengaluru-based edtech startup Supercolum, and they help students to prepare for UPSC exams, and they raised $2 million in their seed round. Next, we have yet-to-be-launched Bengaluru-based EV financing platform Prosperity, and they raised $2 million in their pre-seed round. After that, we have New Delhi-based generative AI startup Conpros GPT, which is trained specifically on Indian tax and regulatory laws to help Indian tax professionals, and they raised $700,000 in their seed round. And then finally, we have Luthiana-based D2C tea brand Freshleaf, and they raised $120,000 in their seed round. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you in the next one.